Good morning, guys. I know it is early, but that's when I work, so I thought I would go ahead and um, start messing today and take you with me on this ever-evolving journey here. I'm going to start with this piece, um, the changes that I've done since the last video. I added some of the their art ingredients, mega art stones. I added some of those in here and some of the Matisse dry medium glass beads. And for some reason, last week I was calling them Art Rocks and Michelangelo. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, so I put some of those on there and what I used was just a light molding paste. I just spread it with my palette knife on here and dropped them on there. They're dry now, so I'm going to go ahead and paint them. Also, I added on the back side here, I had this netting and uh, it's a fabric, a lingerie fabric, uh, kind of stretchy, and I had actually put paint on it earlier because I have so many materials that are already made up because I like things when I want them. I don't want to stop and make them, so I grab them um, and I make them. So anyway, I had this made up, so I cut it and just glued it around here, and I'll probably do more with that. I'm not quite sure yet. I also added some gold with the uh, primary elements on here. And I think I may go back and add some more of the purple on top. I'm not quite sure that I like. Um, I may like more of the purple. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the primary elements and I'm going to get some of that um, fuchsia kind. And I'm going to use the ginger flower because I love the ginger flower. Good morning, Helen. So we'll see. Where's my bottle here? Yeah. Let's see what happens. This is always a process. I find that if I think too much about it, I usually screw it up. So I find it better to just jump in. Of course, I screw it up just as many times doing it that way, too. But it's more fun when you don't have to think. I just love the way that those primary elements, when you spray them on there, they get down in there between those beads and it just makes them pop. I absolutely love that. And I'll just bring that in and spread it. These, I think you can get these these balls like this that I'm using the art stones. Powertex also makes those. I, I got the art stones on Amazon. I think you can also get the Powertex stuff on Amazon. Or there's distributors here in the United States and the UK or whatever. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Price-wise, I think they're comparable. I've used both. I find them to be, with my work, I found them to be pretty interchangeable. Okay. All right, that's coming in there. That's a good fresh start here. So let's see if I can take this ginger flower and put it a few other places just for a sense of continuity in here. Get up on my brush like so and let's see where should i put it i'm thinking maybe right in here i just kind of have to very lightly brush it this may this may tone that gold down enough that i don't uh, have to go come back with the purple on top we'll see You can tell that it's dried. I mean, when it's wet, it's so much more vivid. And when I put the um, varnish on it, that will make it, that will pull that color in again. It's not going to be as vivid as when it's wet. I guess maybe you could use a resin. I don't work with resin, so um, I'm not really sure how that would work. But I guess you could. Okay, 
that yeah that's working that's toning down the the gold this was really popping out there this this uh, ginger flower is really bringing the uh, sections together sometimes what I do too is in between coats I have like a spray gloss varnish and I will take it outside and I will just spray lightly over what I've done the primary elements on and that just sets it a little bit so I can continue working and then when I'm finished I still go back with the varnish with the liquid varnish but that works okay I'm liking that I feel like it does need a little bit of something but we'll let that sit for the moment and see what happens next okay the next thing i have to work on is i'm working on this box like as i said for my cousin and i had already done the box itself in a collage of mono prints that i've been working so i'm going to lightly go over the inside of the box with gold like I did the outside. And the top I did in a teal, golden teal. And then this has got the uh, Color Art Vivids on top here. Now that's way, woo, way blue. And I need to tone that down. So I'm gonna take the gold and I'm gonna do the inside of that box and I'm gonna also do some dry brushing on this and let's see what we can come up with on that that'll work I use this is golden iridescent fine okay. now I'm not spraying my the box this with water um, I don't necessarily want this to be wet here okay I'm not sure how this is gonna go here so let's just try it and I might spray it after I just lightly brush this on and let that gold just paint down into these little nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices here I'll tone down that blue just a little bit she wanted the, her colors were blue and maroon and orange so when I do the flowers, which is the next thing I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to concentrate on the maroon and orange for the flowers. And you always don't forget your sides. I always drape the sides when I'm using the silk on there. It just makes it looks so much more like what it is, fabric. I apologize for the fiasco last week with the taping. Man, <coughs> that was painful. Whew. Things were not going the way I wanted them to go. I guess that happens with Facebook sometimes, but I think that was user error, not Facebook. Okay. I do like the way that this gold is looking on here. It's toning down the blue. It gives it a much more rich look. And I don't think I'm gonna spray it. I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Kind of brush this in. And when I come back in with my maroon and orange flowers, that's where I'll tone it down even more. And then I'll make sure that when I do the flowers that I go over and I, when I um, tweak them at the end with the detailing, I will make sure that I have gold on there as well, pull it all together. I do like the way this, this teal on the sides is going with this really lovely blue here. And I know you're probably not supposed to be doing this, but you know, I have this big glob of gold up. I'm not gonna waste it. I just scrape it up and I put it right back in the, in the jar because, 
you know, this stuff's expensive. And I use a lot of it, so I have to save where I can. Okay. All right. So I've got that. Okay. Put this aside to dry, and we'll start working on the flowers and you know I just said oh I could use the gold on the inside of this and after I scraped it back in there I remembered I hadn't done the inside oh well I'll do that later okay last time that we were messing I had these pieces that I thought about using on the top of that so that's why I've got my glove on now because I'm going to use the liquid watercolors and stuff on here and I want to make sure that I, it's so it stains really badly, so it's easier to do it this way. Okay, I did the water. Oh, right here before me. Okay, maroon and orange. Let's see here. Here's the orange, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a red, and then tone it down, and I'll bring that down with the paints that I use over it. And one of the paints I'm going to use over it. For maroon is this is um, the color art and again these are the primary elements I have them um, not primary elements these are the vivids I'm using them because I have them wine and roses it's a very uh, delicious color there and that's what I'm going to use over the red with that so that'll work okay so my decision is what to do what and I think. I have these flowers here, and I'm going to start those with the orange. I just top of my bottle off. I just dip right into. I will tone this orange down. This is I just I like having that vivid background because it just shines through. It gives you just a good solid foundation. And you can see how this is just total mess. And I'm just going to put those back on here to dry. Pretty sure I stacked some of those smaller ones on top of that. So after I do this, I'm going to grab a few of those and do those orange as well. I said I keep clay things made up. I found that I tend to use the same shapes in different configurations, so uh, a lot of times I'll just sit down with, in front of the TV and make clay while I'm watching TV. That way I feel like I'm being productive. You know, I can't, it's hard for me to just not do anything <laughs> while I'm sitting on my butt, so. I always feel guilty. And I am retired, so I should be able to sit on my butt if I want to sit on my butt, but if I'm out in the studio, I save my butt sitting for in the house. If I'm out in the studio, I, I feel like I need to be working. Okay, so there's lunch there. Let's see. What would I have put in them? I have no idea. I don't think I put those in there, did I? I could have. Okay. We're just gonna, we're gonna say that I did. <laughs> and we're gonna paint those orange too. And then we'll do the rest of those little ones in um, the red. As you can see, I just got it on my hand. It's, it's, it'll be there for a while. It does eventually wash off in the shower later. I might have taken a picture of it, but I don't know. I try to, but I don't remember if I did or not. I've slept since then. Hi, Morgan. Oh, 
Well, we had a great show at Gallery 1111 last weekend. We sold one of those uh, lavender, the round lavender piece and one of the 16 by 20 lavender pieces. I guess those are really popular colors. I think they're very soft and dreamy and romantic and are, I think would look really good in a, in a bedroom. So Anyway, next show coming up is going to be Looney's Art uh, Shows, September Art Show. That's going to be mid-September. And I'll have some new work coming into that. After that, it's holiday season. I don't know if there's anything going on in October, but November and December are crazy. There'll be a lot going on there, so I'm going to use October to just really get things made up and ready to ready to roll. I also use that to uh, make some more videos. I don't know. We shall see. Okay, once I put this initial coat on there, I let them dry for a while. Because remember I said you can't you can't work it too much wet or your clay is going to start to get kind of slimy and it'll it'll get soft and gushy. You don't want that. So it's just better to work in layers and let them dry. Come back to them later on. Most of the time I'll have this base of the liquid watercolors and then any number of layers on top. Usually, definitely more than, always definitely more than one layer on top. And I like to accent them with touches of gold or metallics around the edges to make them pop even more. By the time I finish doing this, my other piece might be dry enough. I can go back and add another layer to that. And then I'm going to start, I have an old piece that was really an experimental piece for me um, that I'm not happy with, so I'm going to mess with it. So that's, that's what I do. People ask, how do you have so many pieces? Well, it's because of that. I don't throw things away. I keep them even if I don't like them because I know that later on I will come back and redo. It may not be immediate. It may be months, and I've had things sit for years. And then come back and mess with them, redo them, tweak them. You know, your, your ability, your skill grows the more you work with art. It's just like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. So when I do something, my skill level may not have been to the point where I could do what I wanted to do with it. But the more that I create, the better I get. And then I can come back with new skills and make something old new again, which is the name of the song. Everything old is new again. Anybody remember that? I used to sing in Sweet Adeline's International, which was, is, is. And an organization for four-part women's harmony barbershop loved it sang in that for probably 20 years and directed a couple of choruses founded a couple of choruses then when the hearing went that kind of went too but that particular we sang a lot of old songs and everything old is new again was definitely one of those songs these could be grassy things but I don't use them to me they're more ribbons than grass or leaves or something so I just paint them whatever my little heart desires The way you make these is you roll them out like snakes that we did when we were in kindergarten and then flatten them. 
and then arrange them and let them dry. Just like that and that. Hey, Connie. Oh my gosh, your power is still out. Okay, my daughter is in Woodridge, which is outside of Chicago, and I had a text for her this morning saying that they had power, they were lucky, but a lot of people around them were without power. She sent me a video of those storms last night. That was uh, pretty wild. Just glad everybody's safe, or hope everybody's safe. All I could do is wish that it was like, okay, would you please send some down here? We are 100 degree plus weather, at least for the next week. My pond is drying up. The shallow parts are drying up, but the beaver are still there. The fish are still there. The turtles are still sunning themselves. Okay. Uh, I save, I save paper towels too. So when I clean stuff, I always try to have paper towels around. I just skirt, get that off my hands, off my glove, so I don't transfer that red to whatever else I'm working on. Okay, I'll let that go by the wayside for a bit. Head up. These up, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, this is pretty dry. I didn't really saturate that, so let's see. Hmm. I think I would like that to be a little darker, so I'm gonna put on the card over here. See if I can come up with a darker. In fact, I have this. This is cool. This is this is the primary element, and this is mulberry. Just this delicious purple here. Okay, so let's let's try that. That's gonna be nice. I just brush it over the top. birds out there. I get up in the morning and I have my morning chores. First thing I do is come out here to the studio and I have my bird food, sunflower seeds and the little bitty seeds. Have that in a big trash can out here and I scoop up a gallon container of at a time of the bird seed and I've got bird feeders everywhere out there. Because there's nothing that's more, I mean, I can, I'm sitting here right now looking out there watching the cardinals just swoop in and eat. And I've got a hummingbird feeder that's right outside the window. And I'm just starting to feed hummingbirds. I don't see very many, just a couple at a time. But I'm hoping that eventually more will appear. They really liked the flowers, but right now everything's dead here. It's just too hot. I'm just trying to keep the perennials alive. And that's about all I can do. It's too hot, things aren't even blooming, you know. Okay, if these little art rocks come unglued, that's fine. I just actually save them. <laughs> Talk about a pack rat. I save them, I'll throw them on something else. serious pack rat ink tendencies. Okay, I'm just putting some of these in these little um, indentations in here just to almost add a little shading. Using it on top here. We'll see how that turns out. 
Change my mind on that. Good for first layer. Now this is this is pretty saturated now, so I need to um, I need to let this dry. So I'm gonna put it aside. And let's look at this piece. Okay, so when I start out with a piece like this that, you know, again, was experimental. This is inspired by Carol, Nel Carol Nelson, whose work I deeply admire. Um, and she does these geologic abstracts that I would love to learn how to do. I was just seeing if I could actually figure out something that looked similar uh, my way, because I have no idea how she does it. Um, it doesn't really, <laughs> but but it was a fun experimentation. So at this point, this doesn't have just a lot of texture on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add texture on top of it. And um, once I get the texture added, I will probably go back and gesso everything. I've got this little doohickey here. I'm just going to leave it be and work around, not even around it. I'll cover up some of it, work with it, and it'll just become part of that background texture and um, who knows I may cut away some I don't know I don't know I've got my light molding paste here that I can use I've got um, cheesecloth I've got you know, here's some Tyvek and I've got those art stones anything other than anything I've got. So let's see first. Okay, I think I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to mix up some light molding paste with some something. <laughs> see what I mean by playing it by your I, I literally never know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to need much for initially there, so we'll just leave it at that. Let's see, what have I got over here? I've got some smaller beads. Let's see, eggshells. Hold on a second, let me grab my textures over here. I've got sand and sawdust and all sorts of crap here. I have no idea what this is. Oh, I think this is some of that almond flour. Okay, that sounds good. Let's use that. Dump it all in there. What the heck. This will make it pretty stiff. Some more molding paste in there. The trick with this is just making sure it's blended really well. Stuff. I can add 
This is kind of like cooking. I just added some sawdust. <laughs> Why not? Just because. It's a little stiff. I didn't want to go over to the fridge and pull out the almond flour for more, so that'll stiffen it up. to kind of let the lines of the piece suggest to me what I'm going to do. Um, I'm thinking I need something this way, so I'm going to follow this line. It was difficult for me when I was just starting to create to just come in like what I'm doing right now and just slop it on there. But um, it really is what you have to do. You just, just got to go for it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Nothing. You've got a piece that's not selling because it's not, not it's a crappy piece. So make it something beautiful. If I don't like it when I've done it this time, well, I'll stick it back on this shelf and I'll do it again. Okay. Now I'm going to take just water on my fingers here to mold this. To smooth this out a little bit. I'm not... I don't want it sopping wet here, but it's so much easier when you're doing this to have your finger damp. So just keep water close to you. And I can make this into a ridge. This is also when I work with uh, Maria's mixture with the toilet paper. I do exactly the same thing. Now it's a little, this is more like dough than her toilet paper mixture is. I can mold her mixture more than or better than I can do with this but you see I'm doing that I'm just picking to the side and I've got a curve in here making that very serpentine here. I am, by the way, going to go ahead and do another video on Thursday. Uh, don't know what I'll be working on then, but we'll see. I just like to throw an extra one in here during the week. So you guys who are around something to watch. I'm just gently smoothing this. Now, if I'm gentle, I can actually push that to the side a little bit. Much easier to do with Maria's mixture of toilet paper and molding paste. But you can do it here too. Okay, I've still got more of this. Ah. So I'm going to put it here. Moving. The stiffer your mixture, the easier it will be. I really love that toilet paper mix. 
but man, it's just it's just hard on my wrist. Especially the older I get, it's just it just I'm getting it stiff enough, it, it just hurts. So I can I can do it in small batches, but it would be probably much easier if I used a blender and I did the you know shredded the toilet paper so that it mixed easier. I've heard people say too that they've used a, a paper mache mix, the dry mix, and mix that with the light molding paste. I have not tried that. That's too. I'm gonna want. I'm gonna want something else there. Just know how I, how I am about doing things in threes. So. As long as my fingers are wet, I can mold this between my fingers. Kind of thin it a little bit. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Let's see. What else do I want to do? That may be all I'm going to do on that as far as with that particular texture. Hmm. But I may use my um, cheesecloth in here. The easiest way you can apply your cheesecloth in a multitude of, of ways here, but the easiest way I've found just is just spread my molding paste down. And then spread my cheesecloth. This is uh, grade 10. It is the loosest weave of the cheesecloth. got the texture that was underneath there with the existing paint. Now I've got some of the molding paste on there and now the cheesecloth. Okay. This end's looking kind of bare so I'm thinking maybe some cheesecloth. Maybe right in here. And then I may come back when this is dry and I may put some more crackle paste in there. Or I might not. I don't know. The challenge with this stuff is spreading it out. It's just so cool though. Okay, let's see here. So I think that's that's leaving a place for the eye to rest in here. So I think I'm going to stop at that. Now I may go back after this is all dry. Um, and what I'll probably do is gesso the whole thing. Because when it's all white, I'll be able to focus more on the texture than I am right now. The color is distracting me. So in order to really see what my focal points are, where my eye lands with the texture, I would like it all one color, so gesso is the way to do that. So I'll make the decision as to what I'm going to add in here after I have gessoed it. Okay, so that's dry. 
everything is drying. So that is it for today. And I will see you guys Thursday at 2 o'clock. I think I'm also going to be doing a live stream um, tomorrow's Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow, I think, over on uh, Looney's Audacious September show. Just something in there for a little while. So uh, you'll see it pop up on your notifications if I do. All right, guys. See you Thursday. Bye.